In this Makers Muse community special video, I'll be going through your results of the torture easter egg file that I put out last week. Heaps of you printed it and got varying degrees of success and some of the prints are absolutely incredible, so let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. So as I said, last week I released for an Easter special this 3D printing file, the, the, the Makers Muse Torture Easter Egg print. Um, it's pretty challenging because it has three separate shells that when printed correctly have just enough clearance that they can revolve around each other. Uh, it's a real test for a printer's ability to, to have proper retraction and also not to knock over the, the, the sharp uh, thin edges as they form. This is the original size and this is a uh, 200%. These are both printed in filamentum filaments. This is the uh, gold happens and this is their vertigo gray which is really popular right now. And heaps of you took the challenge to print your own. So in this video I'm going to go through my favorite picks uh, starting from like the most simple the way to the most ridiculous. And I do apologize up front if I don't show yours on this video. There was so many amazing prints that I saw that you shared with me on social media that I just can't get through all of them in one video. So I do apologize if it's not in this video. But without further ado, let's jump into the first one. So I did choose one on Instagram to get started with and that is this print from 3D Printing 101 on Instagram. Uh, he did, a, did an awesome job in again the same vertigo gray which is this this uh, filament from Filamentum. It's one of my favorites. I think it's one of the community's favorites filament filament colors right now. Uh, absolutely awesome result on his printer. And um, as you can see, works perfectly. So well done, man. I did say that I would show it in this video. So here you go. This is a prime example of exactly what this file should look like um, here on Instagram. Next we have Carl. So I like Carl's the like one of my favorites because he did a little gif of it. So uh, you can see here spinning around and then an, an Easter egg magically appears. Uh, it, he did break a little bit of the edge you can see here, but hey, what are you going to do? It's printed at the small original scale or maybe slightly bigger. I think it is the original scale though. And he did a really good job uh, making this little animation which is what, what it was all about. You know, it's a bit of fun of Rista. Next we have Chris's egg um, and he printed this on the CR10 and did note he had some under extrusion issues. So I'll look at, I'll start with this one because this marble filament is one of my favorite, favorite PLAs next to the filamentum gray, I suppose, the vertigo gray. It has this really cool speckled look, which is really neat. looks like marble or stone, um, but Going to this one, he was saying there was under extrusion issues. So diagnosing under extrusion is a bit tricky, but with the CR10, I'd probably assume it's an issue with the Bowden feed and the extruder. And because the other one looked good, it might be a filament specific thing, you know, filament slightly under diameter or uneven that would cause various areas to under extrude if it slightly di dips under the correct diameter. Who knows? Uh, or you might be printing just a bit too fast for the filament to keep up and it can't melt in time. Therefore, the extruder skips and you get uh, under extrusion. But otherwise, um, this one's not the best, but this one is looking really, really good. So let's jump on to the next one, which is John's. Now, I chose John's because he printed this on the Ender 2, which is an extremely low cost 3D printed kit. And it just shows what these machines are capable of in 2018. It's absolutely insane, guys. Like, when I first got into 3D printing, machines that printed terribly cost thousands of dollars. And you'd have to spend like 30 grand on a Stratasys to get anything slightly reliable. Now, you can get machines like this for you know, a few hundred bucks. And sure, it's just PLA, but it is printed um, at the original scale. They're saying 0.12 layer height. And it took a little bit of fiddling to get loose, which is it's true. The original scale is a bit is a bit hard to get loose and moving, but he got it working, which is absolutely incredible. And just a testament to how easy it is to get into 3D printing in this day and age. The the financial barrier is so much lower than it used to be. Next we have Klaus's 3D print. Now he does have quite significant uh, artifacting on the Z axis here, and he's saying it's printed with a Prusa Mark III in 0.15. Which is a bit unusual because, I mean, this is printed on the Prusa and it's not too bad. Um, there has been conflicting reports about people having issues with printing on the Prusa. It's hard to tell, especially if it's a kit when you assemble it yourself, if it's been induced from the assembly process or even in shipping if it's shipped assembled. 
uh, or if it's the filament or what's going on, but really that print should not have that degree of, of wobble. That should not be there. Um, and to me, it looks like it's catching possibly. Maybe the Z hop isn't enabled uh, because that generally happens when it catches on the edge of the, uh, the thin details and they flex as they form. But yeah, I'm not exactly sure what's causing it. 0.15, it should be a lot not neater than that. But hey, at least it moves in the end, which is what it's all about. All right, next we have Beardy McBeardface print. Uh, so that it was for Mrs. M McBeardface. <laughs> uh, and he printed it in PETG on the Mark III. So this is what I mean about the conflicting reports. Um, PETG is, tr is tricky to print without stringing. And uh, the print is actually quite decent. Uh, it has been scaled up, obviously. And you see what I mean about stringing? PETG does sort of get that look to it. Uh, but that's a really, really neat print, in my opinion. Um, again, like, it's, yeah, like small amounts of, of inaccuracies there. Uh, and that part there looks like it's been misaligned. So I need to do more testing. This is why my Mark III review is so, so slow, because I don't want to assess a machine on a on something that's uh, fixable in, in a slicer setting. Uh, I want to make sure it's a hardware thing and I have been getting a bit of stringing on my prints and I have found that the Mark III does struggle a bit with with uh, lattice style torture tests so lots of retraction points. Uh, it does struggle a little bit with that so that might just be something that they'll get better in time with. I don't know but uh, overall this is a pretty good print. Really nice color as well. I love the look of PETGs where they got that translucent transparent look. But uh, yeah, a printer like that shouldn't be doing that. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what's causing it in the Mark III. Um, maybe Joseph can jump in if he watches this. Next we have James. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, filament choices. So James printed this in Filler Blend PLA and I've never seen a filament like that. Uh, it's like they've chucked in different colored pellets to get that effect. So they've got like you know, it goes from a dark purple to a lighter purple to a green and back again. Really, really nice look. I mean, out of all the prints, um, someone did say that the, the original design looks like something from Subnautica with one of the eggs. I have been playing Subnautica, so I might have been inspired subconsciously. Out of all of them, though, this does look the most like some kind of actual egg, like something has laid this, uh, some sort of dragon or underwater creature. Um, and he's done a great job and it looks really good. Again, this is on the, looks like the Prusa Mark III and again, slightly different results. So I'm really not sure what to say about the, the differences people are getting. I'm not really sure what's causing it. It might just be a filament thing. Who knows? It's really hard to tell at this stage. And then for someone to try something completely different, Wellbot tried printing the egg on a resin based machine. So all these other prints so far and the rest I'm going to show you are FDM based, fused deposition modeling. That's where your filament comes through. It's on a, on, a, on a spool and it gets extruded out as molten plastic. Resin based systems are different. They have a liquid resin that is polymerized with UV light. And uh, Wellbot tried his on what looks like the gizmo, which is a top down DLP, so it has a projector here and you can see it shines into a vat and the platform slowly drops into the vat to form the egg and his result was this. <laughs> so um, resins need post curing and that's always been the issues with parts in parts with liquid resin because when they cure like they'll ten tendency to stick to each other. So he said it did move independently initially but because it's so soft coming off the machine, it has needs to be post cured. It did break, unfortunately, but that is some incredible detail. Uh, that is super impressive. It's almost worth designing a file just for SLA of version of this where the parts are um, kind of like that separated already with maybe tiny little internal supports that, it, that just keep it apart while you clean it and cure it. And then you break them free and then the whole thing will move. I'm not sure. Uh, I will be playing with more resin printers in future, but it's definitely a challenge to do anything like this in resin. So well done, man. That's that's pretty brave and impressive of you. Right and then, of course, I have to mention 3D Maker Noob Joe. Um, Joe never backs down from a Maker's Music challenge, as he says here. And again, like Vertigo Gray filament here, PLA, lovely color. Um, and I do give you a warning, uh, slight blood warning. Uh, Joe did 
uh, draw blood. <laughs> so, so uh, we have had our, our blood offering to the 3D printing gods on behalf of uh, Joe. So thank you, thank you, Joe from 3D Maker Noob, for blessing our 3D prints that they may be successful in future. And another wonderful YouTuber who never backs down from a challenge is Joel, the 3D printing nerd. Now I sent the file to Joel and uh, he decided to print it on the Prusa multi-material upgrade for the Prusa Mark II S. So he printed it in three colors. Absolutely insane. You're a nutcase, man. Um, to attempt this is crazy. To attempt the file in it on itself is hard, but in multiple colors, you have the, the, the purge block on the side. To do this with the multi-material upgrade is crazy and it actually <laughs> works. So Joel says he might have a video on this coming soon. He did show it briefly on another video on his channel, but yeah, dude, that is nuts. <laughs> um, that's definitely one of the coolest versions of this, this file I've ever seen. So well done, it's super cool. Talking about cool ones, uh, we're gonna move on to the huge ones. So some people didn't take 200% scale um, as, as what it is, they wanted to go bigger. So Michael printed it at 500% scale, taking 54 hours. Uh, that filament, uh, it's a shame that he had to change, uh, uh, but that filament is beautiful. Uh, to have a filament change at that gradient level is absolutely gorgeous. So uh, I wish it went all the way up, but it unfortunately doesn't, but it still looks absolutely amazing. This egg is incredible, 500% scale, which would make it about that high, um, taking 54 hours and have it succeed and move. Of course, the tolerances get easier when you get bigger, but then you increase the risk of, uh, of you know, things happening. He did have a power failure, which is why power failure recovery in 3D printers is so handy these days. And then that's just awesome. So well done, Michael. That's sick. Super cool. But we need to finish up on one more egg. And I think by far the prettiest egg award will go to Chris uh, Neres, who's also has his own YouTube channel as well for 3D printing. Uh, so he took the egg and printed it at 500% again using 3D print, uh, using Zyro uh, Pink PLA um, for 3D printing, 3D Pink Mafia, uh, 70 hours. That is incredible, man. Um, it's, it's so vibrant and like confronting. It's just intense. Uh, so I think that would be one of my favorites. You can see, and I'm gonna be so picky here, you can kind of see a little inaccuracy there. These overhangs do wobble as the print goes up and they can move, which might call, might be what causes that wobble in the other prints I showed you. But that's just, I mean, it's very little I can pick on that. That is such a good print uh, of, a, of a test that's really, really difficult to print. So well done, guys. So there you have it, guys. Those are my favorite picks of the Make His Muse Torture Egg. So thank you to all of you who printed it and shared the file. And also to thank you everyone who donated as well. It was a free file, but I did say you can donate to help the channel and a lot of you did, which is amazing. It really does help pay the bills because this is my full-time job. And if you haven't printed this yet, look, you don't have to wait till next Easter. It is a legitimate test of your 3D printer's accuracy. It tests retraction, it tests printing accuracy, and um, also print stability, how accurate and stable your printer is to be able to make them move at the end like this without binding up. So you can find the link here to the original video, actually it's there, to the original video if you haven't seen it yet. And uh, again, big thanks to all of you for testing the file and sharing it out. It really means a lot to me. And I look forward to seeing you, all of you very shortly again here on Make Use Muse, where it's my aim to empower your creativity with technology. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.